Hi, Chris. How are you today? Very good, Oliver. Thank you for asking. Hope you do the same. Feel well and, you know, good to see you. Yeah, so we wanted to talk about our 25th anniversary and how we both met and what kind of funny stories we uh, had together. So maybe we can just have a short chat and remember how that was so such a long time ago. So in the, in the, in the uh, early days, we first met at around the Seabit show. Actually, we didn't meet, so that was the story somehow. So we tried to meet. We... Werner and I were coming to your booth and um, trying to ask for any kind of cooperation, interest in our um, live recording software, real-time encoding software, which we created together. And um, somehow we didn't manage to, to speak to you. So <laughs> we just called you after the show and claimed that we had an interesting discussion and discovery together. So that's where we reached you on the phone. and. That's how we first got in touch. How did you remember that situation? Well, you know, it's, first of all, you know, it's quite a milestone for doing 25 years as an anniversary. You know, that's, that's already a chapeau and, and, and very, uh, a big accomplishment. How, how did I look at that? Uh, you know, uh, as you said, we both are already in the business for a long, long time. You know, um, I started in the business um, at around 1985, uh, and then when we met at CBIT that time was around 1999, uh, you know, in, in that year. So I was already about 14 years in the business and we had built up something there. Uh, and what do I remember of that? Um, I remember that, you know, in those days we were doing a lot with the former company I was doing a lot of end user business. So you can imagine that the dealers and everybody, the distributors and everybody wanted everything uh, to speak. And then there was a technology company called NanoCosmos who said, you know, we have something interesting. But, you know, what, what I remembered of it was that timing was perfect. You know, what was the big, um, you know, development there? The big development was that we did TV on a PC. And what you as NanoCosmos was uh, were adding as value to, you know, the proposition we had at that time was the capability of recording in software, the recording of a live stream like we do now in either MPEG-1 or MPEG-2. And then, you know, we uh, continued our relationship with more, let's say products, features, and functionality. But that is how I remember that. And I remember going to Berlin and that was the establishment uh, of, you know, our first, uh, you know, getting our heads together. Yeah, absolutely. And that was also an exciting time for us because it was kind of the first deal we had with an international company for our software to be put as a kind of add-on to their hardware devices. So everybody who bought the Hapark Wind TV cards automatically were using our software for recording the, the live streams. And that was an interesting story for us as suddenly all kind of support calls came in from random people, end users, which didn't manage to run their PCs properly. So that was a funny time and a lot of uh, funny uh, calls we got. So, but the exciting time was to have the technology and the innovation um, produced together. And that was really unique in that time based on MPEG-1 actually, video CD format, standard SD and do a live recording because no digital cameras were available. So everything needed to be captured in real time in software. And that was quite an amazing achievement we did together. And um, added a lot of tools and, and things around that. Well, NanoCosmos was capable of doing it and that said it all. Okay, that said it all. Yeah. 
So as you said, you know, then we we went on, you know, I went on with Harpark and you went on with the company. And then, um, you know, around 2006 or so, I, I, I stopped working at Harpark. And then, you know, we touched base again. And, you know, um, I remember, you know, as the day of yesterday that I got either a call or an email where you said, hey, Chris, um, are you going to Hanover Seabit, you know? And uh, w w would it be possible for us to uh, to meet? And I, sh I said, sure. And I guess it was 2008 or 2009, you know, already 14 years ago uh, that, uh, you know, uh, I took um, the opportunity and uh, to come to, uh, to uh, Hanover. And guess what? You were showing innovation again, you know? What was it what you were showing at that time, Oliver? Time. Yeah, that, that's true. It was 3D stereoscopic video streaming, live streaming based on two cameras side by side. That was the days where this new stereoscopic technology evolved. Um, movies like, what was it called, from James Cameron? Avatar. Avatar, right. Coming out mm -hmm. into the cinemas, displays were capable of displaying um, stereoscopic video, etc. So we created a solution around that um, to enable live streaming from stereoscopic cameras. And that was also quite exciting. Again, another innovation. And, uh, you know, um, I, I guess we then, during the show, we discussed, and who's going to buy it? Okay, who's who, who's going to use it and so forth. So I guess that was more like the starting point of our, you know, the relationship and our collaboration is that, you know, technology is one thing, uh, but, you know, having something that the maturity of the market can absorb, that, you know, things come together is a different thing. And, you know, just as a piece of feedback uh, from, from my history is that I always used to work with a technology guy that always was his years, three to five years ahead. So whatever he had in his mind, I learned over time that I needed to wait three to five years before something really started to trigger. So, but that is something that I guess we both then embraced is that vision and technology will take time to develop. And it is all about, you know, staying relaxed and staying calm to let things develop. But again, you know, you, you let the company very, very well. And that's how we then started to work together. Me as a small freelancer, because, you know, the company was still pretty small and so forth. So that, that, that was funny. Yeah, sitting together at the whiteboard or flip chart and uh, drawing things and thinking about what we do next as innovation, that was exciting. And um, being on that learning path together to understand what's exactly what you mean, the balance between technology, business, who's going to buy the technology, how can we do, create a business proposition which is sustainable in the long term, etc. So that's exciting things we created together. One thing that that really, or a couple of things that that come back to that time for me. Uh, number one, you know, the meeting that we had together with Ulrich uh, in the meeting room, and decision number one that we all uh, agreed upon. We immediately finish, stop uh, doing B two C business, business to consumer. Boom! Immediately, big cross, never again. So we decided we will do B2B. And the other thing that, you know, really struck me when, um, you know, we started to work together and in the first months, year, that I, uh, you know, was looking over your shoulder along with NanoCosmos was the time it took for a customer to get acquainted, to connect with, 
and then get the customer into production. I still remember that at those days, it took us a year from the first moment we connected with a customer until a customer was in production. And, you know, we also very early on said, you know, if you want to run a business, this is not the way forward because, you know, having lead times of a year to get customers really going is completely out of the question, crazy and so forth. But we had we had some interesting developments during our early years with technology, you know, Apple and, and all of these other things that came along and really make life interesting. Absolutely. So being one of the first who created a low latency solution for iPhones was really kind of an enabler for certain use cases. And then in the end, creating the whole live streaming platform, which makes it much easier for our customers to come on board and to create their business applications around live video. That, that was for one of the most important decisions we did to put the technology into the cloud, um, put everything together under a unique platform, a comprehensive platform to make it really easy to use live streaming for interactive use cases. And as you said, in the early days, it was very complex. We had tools and technologies, but bringing these things together was still very complex on the customer side. So that's things we always had in mind, the ease of use and the usability of advanced technology and bringing that to our business customers. Let me, let me, you know, provide some more feathers back to the technology team within our company. Uh, the feathers that I wanted and I want to share is, you know, when I look back, you know, both uh, the technology heart of our company uh, identified you know, HTML, identified the new, you know, the new mobile phones, what the mobile phones could do, understood flash and what the meaning of flash was and, and what's going to happen. And on top of that, clearly defined, and that's something that you very strongly from the very early days mentioned, is, you know, I want a browser-based platform period okay no plugins no downloads browser based um, and also those two words browser based you know were the beginning of a very clear simple strategy that led to you know in the end an, an interesting service uh, and um, as we learned as well you know we are business people, we're technologists, uh, we then want to push the envelope, like, you know, what's possible and what can we accomplish? And in that, uh, in that, um, let's say, journey, Oliver, how was your feeling about partnerships and collaboration and how, how did that feel? Yeah, well, that was very important in the end. It turned out that, that we needed the right partners to uh, work together on certain um, parts of the of the workflow, but certain parts needed to also to be done by our, on our own. So finding the right partners for certain activities very important, but doing the right things together and having things under control to provide the right service is also important. So it's a balance. What I learned was you had something in mind. And then I said, let's figure it out how we can get it done. Then we would have talks. We would have talks for a week, for a month, for two months. And then in the end, usually we figured out it's not going to work out. We're going to have to do it ourselves. Because, you know, in those days, how the market trend was with regards to CDN technologies and, and CDNs in general, and where we wanted to go was like a big clash. It was like, you know, it is not compatible at all, you know, and that's things that I felt from, from what we did very smartly is, you know, we didn't accept and embrace where the market was going 
but we believed in what we were trying to accomplish and said, we'll find our way. It's going to take longer, but we're going to find our way. And, and that, you know, this uh, stamina and determination, you know, is also a part of this relationships and everything else. You know, we try, we look, we figure out, and then, you know, nanostream clouds saw its light. Exactly, and that's still somehow the case. We're still somehow in a niche, in a sweet spot, where the broadcasters are not active. Things like OTT, broadcast heavy production to the millions, that's not the use case we see. And um, that's, that's great to identify the certain use case we are working on and finding the right partners for these activities. You know, another personal experience that I remember as the day of yesterday was, you know, uh, we were, we just launched Nanostream Cloud and, um, you know, we, uh, Antonella and I said, let's go to ICE, Let, let's go to London, let's, let's go and ICE is an iGaming show and so forth. So. Antonella and myself up on a plane, get to London, you know, no idea. But as you said before, you know, we had a solution for iOS. And as I was describing, all the CDNs went in a certain direction with iOS that was high latency. We did something different, but still within, you know, uh, standards and so forth. And we had low latency. So we went to ICE and you know, as you remember, in the early days, in the mid 80s, when we would go to an overseabit, you know, it would be packed. You know, completely Hanover would be completely down. You know, you couldn't find a restaurant, you couldn't find a place to sleep. It was packed. And I remember, you know, as if it is the day of yesterday, I picked up the phone. I said, Oliver, yes, Chris, Oliver, this is huge. This, this is, you know, very, very exciting. You know, I haven't had this feeling in 10 years or 20 years before I went uh, back to, uh, to uh, Hanover Seabit and, and ICE. So the whole initiation of, of the the excitement of what we had built and what we had done and the technology and the business all started to come together. And, you know, that, that was a great feeling. That was a great feeling. The whole, you know, excitement of, of, of the strategio, uh, Stratego play is like connecting the dots. And now it's like, okay, woo, this is going to be fun. Remember that as well. That was really, really exciting going to these kind of different industry shows, which are much different from the broadcast space. That was uh, very interesting. Well, now that you talk about the broadcast shows, another story again. You know, I remember, you know, way, way back in 2010, 11 or 12, whatever it was, we said, you know, you can do live streaming and we were at the broadcast show. They looked upon us as if, as if we were parias, as if we're like, you're out of space, you know? This is unbelievable, this is not true. And ever since today, we still learned that the broadcast industry and the live streaming industry are still not 100% connected with each other, but still we have done whatever we could to you know, initiate the industry that these can be converged and can be you know um, new uh, um, opportunities and interactive live streaming uh, opportunities and use cases can be uh, developed and can be uh, used. So you know, really, really interesting how certain things happened, how we saw things, how we reacted to it, and and what we did with it. So. You know, we have a long, let's say, list of uh, experiences that triggered us in certain activities or directions. Right. So time is running out a bit. We need to jump to our next meetings again. 
But thanks a lot, Chris, for sharing the stories and uh, for the exciting time together and looking forward to the next couple of years, whatever happens together in our collaboration. The feeling is completely mutual and let's, uh, you know, take the gloves and uh, let the opportunities and the challenges come at us and, you know, master them and, and further grow and develop together with our marvelous, wonderful team, you know, to, uh, to the next stages. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.